yeah. Let's make this happen, guys. We are, we are burning daylight. We gotta get this little practice final out of the way. What do you know about breaks? What if this was your final exam? And look at that first question. Which of these would not require a driver to exert unusual force to brake? In other words, more force than you would ordinarily have to apply to stop the car. Which one of these would not cause that? Brake fluid must not do what? If you want your brake fluid to be good brake fluid, what's, what's something you don't want it to do? I got it. I got it. You got it? This brake assembly goes where? Left front, right front, left rear, right rear. You have 10 seconds. Oh, no, don't pay that. You put so much unnecessary pressure on me. My brain can't function right. I think that's. Oh, okay. I just had two. You got it? These are what kind of brakes? Are these leading trailing, dual servo, heavy duty, or motorcycle brakes? Motorcycle brakes. Obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything is brakes on a motorcycle. They have the speed is. Mean. Which of these goes on the left front? A, B, both or neither? Neither. <laughs> <coughs> Wait, there's the brakes in the front. My truck can't go. Yeah, that 69 Chevy that you just bought got brakes on the front. Drum brakes on the front. You ready? Question six, on these dual servo brake shoes, which shoe goes to the front? Which shoe goes to the front? Shoe A, shoe B, either, or these aren't dual servo shoes. Oh, well, it's not even, <laughs> this is going to help you with your final final. It is. You won't take on my we have five seconds. Four. Three. Yeah. Wait. What? Did we, what goes to the front? Okay. The drum brake assembly goes where? Where does this drum brake assembly go? Right uh, front, right rear, right front, left rear. We had the same question over and over again. <laughs> The 
output piston in a hydraulic system exerts five times the force that the applied piston exerts. Why is the output force greater? Pick the best answer to this question. Uh, what? Um, the output piston in a hydraulic system exerts five times the force the applied piston exerts. Why is the output force greater? Welcome to the wonderful world of Pascal's Law. If the vehicle does not brake when the pedal is fully depressed, this may be caused by what? <laughs> Basically, what, the way that I should run that question differently if the brake pedal goes all the way to the floor. Well, I should have written that. I mean, I actually didn't write that question right. Which of the following would not usually cause brakes to grab? That's when you just start to apply the brake and the wheel slides and you didn't mean for that to happen and just one of them slide. Which one of them would not cause the brakes to grab. That means three of these things would cause the brakes to grab, or could. What is the proper name for port A? What is the proper name for port A? This is the cross section of a master cylinder. Don't you wuss out on me. This booster is A, apply, B, release, or C, holding. Oh. Pay attention to the words. Read the words. Oh. If the vacuum port is closed, and the atmospheric port is open. You got that? No, you got it. This booster is A applied, B released, or C holding. Why is this being done? She's an auditory learner. She's one of those people that when she's in a grocery store, she's talking to herself. Everybody stay away from her because it makes you strange. I did that the other day. Yeah, I never mind that. What are we checking? Rotor thickness variation, rotor parallelism, rotor lateral run out, or rotor radial run out. Thickness is all about. Why is this operation being done? You better not get this wrong. <coughs> See, now he don't know anymore. What are you talking about? Uh, I have I done this? Yeah. How do you do fast car? <laughs> oh man. Fluid analysis by stimulation of umbilical yeah, copper alpha waves. You have to have a dip strip. Do you see a dip strip in this picture? No. Well, why are you saying fast car? 
He's the one saying pass the bar. I'll be a bunny. Well, that's it. You flipped her up. I knew it went past. Oh, I'm sure. All right. I, I would even do it. See, if a customer says their brake pedal falls slowly to the floor as they're sitting at a stop sign and the car starts to creep, what's the most likely cause of this symptom? In other words, they're sitting there, it stops initially just fine, then all of a sudden the brake pedal starts falling to the floor real slow, and it does this every time they stop, and it's trying to creep. This is a zero to one inch micrometer. What is the reading? Oh, finally Good something. Gosh. No, I'm going to get right. Whoa. Well, question 21. I'm, I'm only 18. How? I don't know. Well, 21 has got A, B, C, and D. But so this will pick it? Be good. <laughs> How long? I, it's 0. something. And you got to put the right number down there. You got seven seconds. Mm-mm, Ready? This is a zero to one inch micrometer. What is this reading? You gotta write it down properly. If you don't write it down properly, you fail the exam. You don't put the numbers in the right order, don't put them in the right place. Don't add the right zeros, whatever. I need more of these. I know I'm talking about like on tests. What's this reading here? Probably caused this uneven brake pad wear. The most likely thing that would have caused this brake pad to wear like a wedge. Did you, did you not answer some of the questions? 21. Yeah, 21 is when it started on that crown. There's 21. I just leave 21 blank and then go to 22. Huh? Because that 21 you have on here is a multiple choice. Well, scratch out that and write it up beside it. Okay. Sorry, I confused you. Um, if you put the, the, the first, that one in 22, they all fit in all the blanks. Yeah. Oh, they did? Okay. All right, so there may be the, maybe I forgot to put a 21, huh? Yes, that's not good. Uh -huh. Alright, let's go to the answers. Yay. Oh, here's 26. Uh, Sorry. Okay. Checking a vehicle notice that even though it's driven every day, the rear rotors are rusty, but the front ones are not. What might be the cause of this problem? I actually saw this in here one time on a Chrysler Seabury. The lady that drove the car was noticing that her back rotors were rusty all the time. You don't want it absorbing moisture. That's why you don't put the jug on the bench and leave the lid off. You know what I mean? Always put the lid back on the brake. As soon as you get through pouring, put the lid back on it. You know what I mean? So you can see we go left rear. How do we know it's left rear? Hey. How do we know it's left rear? Is it because of the, um, the parking brake thing? Exactly. Well, yeah. This part back here, this bar, mm -hmm. and then this cable is going to go on the back. And we know it's a rear brake because it's got the parking brakes on it. It's got this, it's got that, it's got this. That's rear brakes going to be parking brakes. Alright, what kind of brakes are these? Uh, dual servo. Dual servo. 
Which of these goes on the left front? Neither one of them. Those are both rear brakes, right? These dual servo brakes used, which should go to the front? B. It's the one with the short lining. On dual servos, the short lining always goes to the front. It is Cajun guy, T-Boy. Uh, this friend of mine named David Hughes that ran a Spence battery down in Port Arthur, Texas for a long time. He said, T-Boy said he put brake shoes on his truck and it had brakes all the way around it with drum brakes, right? He says, you know how the, these Cajun guys talk. He says, I dropped down the road on my truck and when I hit the brake, it go back where it come from. And so David said, oh, he's talking about there. So he headed off down the road. As soon as he hit the brake, the truck went, like a handbrake turn. <laughs> well, he had put the long shoes on the right front and the left rear and the short shoes on the left front and the right rear. That's what the whole deal was. He just, put, he just put the shoes on there in any order without paying attention to the fact that the short one goes toward the front. The drum brake assembly goes where? Right front. How do you know? The cable. Huh? The cable. No, oh. well, that's going to tell you right, but this spindle tells you front. Oh. Now, I'll tell you something else. You are almost never on rear wheel drive, I mean, on front wheel drive vehicles, you won't see dual servo brakes. You'll see leading trailing on the rear of a, of a uh, front wheel drive vehicle. Question eight When the brakes aren't being used, there is vacuum on both sides of that diaphragm, right? Right? Both of these guys are right. Pump it to where all the vacuum's gone, put your foot on the brake, start the motor, it ought to go down. What kind of power brake booster gets is, uh, this is power steering pump provides that. As a matter of fact, you remember when Jennifer had to put that uh, power steering pressure line on that uh, uh, Duramax the other day, the leak is so bad? The, the line she replaced went from this down to the power steering pump. That was the one that was leaking. All right. The area of the output piston is five times as large as the area of the input piston. You're going to sacrifice the distance, but you're going to gain the power. You got it? And imagine that. Think about like gears. If you got the thing geared really high, so you got a lot of power, you got to turn the front one a lot really fast while the back one is turning slower, but the back one's got more power that way. This one right here, you increase the pressure, but it only goes one fourth as far. That makes sense? The vehicle doesn't break when the pedal's fully depressed. Could be B or C. And that's why I said this actually, if you had contaminated brake pad lining, it has to probably be all of them. It's not just one. Like if you drove through some oil and it went all your brakes or something. But if it goes all the way to the floor, that's going to be piston being too far on the road or a low fluid level match zone. You guys know that when you're putting the rear brakes back on, if you don't have those brakes, you just adjust it where they're real close to the drum, you're going to have a pedal that goes down and then catches higher. Right? Even if all the air is out of there. It'll fool you into thinking sometimes that there's air in a brake. But somebody put the brake pads, the brake shoes on the rear on, you better adjust those brake shoes on the rear where they're really close to the drum, Mr. Honda man, because you're going to run into this. You're going to say, whenever you put them shoes on there and put it back on, you say, oh man, I did a good job of that. Why doesn't the pedal feel good? You know, so you got to make sure you got to, don't adjust them so far that it's going to heat the drums up. But you want them close enough so when they match the brake, it's going to touch that drum right away. That is really, really, really important. Which of the following would not usually cause brakes to grab? A leak in the wheel cylinder is not going to cause the brakes to go whenever you hit the brake. Contaminated lining will. Now, I had some lining. I had a, a little Mazda GLC I worked on. It was nearly a brand new car when I was working at the Mazda dealer back in 1983. And uh, this thing came in there. And whenever they would just apply the brakes a little bit, it would lock up the back wheels. Just the least little application of brakes. I couldn't see anything wrong with them, but I took the brake linings and I cleaned them off really good. They must have some rosin that was oozing out of them or something because they were so new. Cleaned them off with brake parts cleaner, sanded them some, and all that went away. What's that compensating for? Who got this one wrong and who got it right? I got it right. You got it right? You get it right? Get it right? You're not going to forget it though, are you? Is this booster is applied? Atmospheric source, ports open on the atmosphere. On the atmospheric ports open, you got atmosphere coming in through here. You got a vacuum port closed to keep vacuum away from here. So the atmosphere is going to be the higher pressure area and it's going to apply the brakes. It's going to help you. Why are you hearing a hissing noise on the F 150? Because this port is not sealing good. And this vacuum that's on both sides of this is hissing out of this little atmospheric source. You can hear that. 
So you guys are putting a booster on this afternoon. And you better be glad it's not a Ford Edge because you got to pull the intake manifold off of a Ford Edge to change the booster. We've got to do that. All right, this booster is released. Atmospheric port closed, vacuum port open. And you notice there's vacuum on both sides of the secondary diaphragm. Don't miss this. Why is this being done? It trues the hub for machining. If you got rust and bumps on that, or even if you're putting it back on the car, and the, the hub has got rust and bump on, you know, the one part's got the stud sticking out of it, you need to clean it off there too, or you'll have some run out, you'll have, you know, whoop, whoop, whoop. He had the worst case of brake pulsation I've ever felt the other day. What's being measured? Rotor lateral run out. What's happening here? The check for moisture in the brake fluid. Got more than three tenths of a volt, according to the sources I have. You got moisture in the brake fluid. You'd be surprised how many times you find that. Now, why is copper a problem in brake fluid? Isn't it like the line? It's corrosive. Yeah, copper is really corrosive. Um, and when I tell you, like, you take a uh, one of them old copper pennies, the old one, and lay it on top of the battery, and all of the corrosion will go to that penny and leave your battery cables alone. <laughs> I used to see that. People coming there with pennies laid on top of their batteries. Uh, bad master cylinder when the pedal's fading out. Yeah. This is 266,000. How do we know? 266. You, what do you do? Read this one? Yeah. Separate amateur, you got to add one to it. This right here, you got a. 250 plus 16 is 266. Uh, that ain't rocket science. I almost 265. You want me to have them build you a module over there in math so you can do this? Yeah, I had practice on it. All right. Zero to one inch. What's that one? That's 56,000. Zero point zero five six. I'm off by one of all of 56,000. That's because you're reading, you're not reading the, where the red arrow is, you're reading the number that's right below it. Learn from oh. this. Zero to one. What's, I got What's that? Got that one. Read a quarter. All right. Or three twenty five. All right. What's the reading? Two twenty. Step caliper slide. Bad proportioning valve. Never was letting any brake fluid get to the back. Uh, another way a proportioning valve can die is it can hold fluid back there all the time. Like if it's an ABS system, I've seen it work when you had a panic stop. It would keep the rear brakes applied until you loosen the line and loosen, you know, loosen the line going back. Huh? Eight. You missed nine? Nine out of 26. How many times will 26 go? You're going to 100. I was three for nine. Yeah. Well, 25. Let's say how many times 25 going to 100. How many quarters does it take to make a dollar? Four. Four. Okay, so it's four points per. Four times nine is what? <laughs> My grandson is nine years old. Don't do that. Nine times four is 36. Okay. Ah, oh, I can't believe this. Nine times four is 36. So 36 from 100 is what? 74. 64. Yay. You're proud of that right? This is going to prepare you. A lot of the stuff I showed you on here is going to be a direct correlation. Have you noticed I unlocked your finals on Electude? Yes. Have you taken your finals on Electude yet? That's a fourth of your grade. Plus your other part of your Electude is going to be. You can see, I actually printed you your little, uh, so that you can see where you need to work. Okay. So I made a 64. Yes, you did. Is everybody happy? 64, I'm happy. Can you put that in there? Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I missed because I missed it. I'm marked three answers on one thing and I got it.